Hi, my name's Simon Robb. Um, I live in Brighton and um, I wanted to start my own sort of uh, vinyl vlog because as a vinyl collector myself I've seen so many videos on YouTube and I thought, wow, I've got loads of stuff and it just might be a good outlet for me to be able to talk about what I have, seeing as I don't actually know many people that collect vinyls um, or socialise in those circles as much. Um, so this is kind of a way for me to show people what I have in my collection and uh, show people um, sort of my new additions and maybe if I go on any trips and stuff like that. And I thought one way to start with my first video is talk about some of my favourite records and in my collection which spans quite a lot. Some of my favourites are the reissues I have. Um, I'm a big collector of um, progressive rock, particularly some obscure stuff and because I don't have the sort of wage that can afford um, a lot of these, you know, <coughs> first editions like, you know, I love Comus and Andwella's Dream and Pato and bands like that, but I don't have, you know, the, the kind of money to spend like over a grand. So the best way to it is obviously buying these reissues and I discovered uh, the Akama record label, which is an Italian record label that does a lot of these reissues for a lot of the obscure uh, progressive rock bands that I like. And um, they do, they make really nice 180 gram records, they do really good covers, artwork, and they, they try to make them look as original as well um, as they can. And um, I've got quite a lot of those, so I thought I'd show like some of my favorite ones. And to start off with, uh, one of my favourite records that I have is um, Dark Round the Edges, which um, is a band, uh, this came out in about 1971, and it's a band that I think uh, they got together and they, they recorded this in probably some small studio somewhere, and they only managed really to sell copies to family and friends. It uh, didn't sell well, um, I, didn't, I doubt it was even marketed. but. Over the years, it's sort of garnered this kind of respect, and uh, it's probably been reissued a few times as well. And um, it's become sort of one of those great albums, that, and it's one of my favourite. It's such a good album, um, and I've read a lot of reviews online about it, and they're actually quite mixed. But I, I really do think um, Dark, um, uh, one of my favourite bands. Um, you know, and I particularly love, you know, um, the song Dark Side and Maypole and things. And with the Karma, they released this great edition. It's this gatefold sleeve, um, which looks stunning. Proper hardcover as well. And you also get a booklet with it, which has details uh, about the band, I guess. And you've got the lyrics as well for the tracks, and you've got a bunch of photos and... Um, You've got the Akama label there as well. And yeah, it's just nice and it sounds great. It sounds fantastic on vinyl. Um, I use, I've use i got a uh, Lynn Sondek 1981 and it just sounds fab on that. It sounds really good. Um, one of my other favourite bands, actually, probably even more so than Dark, is uh, Spring, which is um, an Akama issue. Um, I don't know how um, easy this is to get hold of now on Akama, um, but this is like a kind of gatefold but it opens up into three parts which again the original cover was like this it has this amazing cover of a soldier um, sort of dead soldier and the blood running into the stream into this river and it's it's brilliant it's two albums and what's great about this edition is it has on the fourth side it has additional tracks which would have been the second album um, they've actually, you can actually buy, I think, the second album now. They released it a few years ago on CD. I don't know if they released it on vinyl, to be honest. Um, but the additional tracks are brilliant. I actually listen to that more than the main album. It kind of makes me wish that Spring had, you know, released uh, a lot more. Um, and there's like three Mellotrons, I think, in the band. And Mellotrons are like notoriously um, temperamental to use, especially to tour with. Um, so I'm surprised they actually survived <laughs> to make one album. Um, but it's great, great music, a real kind of uh, military sound to it, um, and uh, great riffs, and the singer, I think the singer's amazing. Um, really, really great singer on this album. I couldn't recommend more Spring. I really, really couldn't. Um, next one I've got, which I really like, is um, Killing Floor, 
which is, uh, this album is Out of Uranus. I think this is the second album they did. I think they only did two. Um, I've got the first one, I think, on iTunes. Um, great. Again, another lovely gatefold, and this has a kind of textured sleeve to it as well, which I like. And it uh, oh, just sounds brilliant. Such a good album. And I think this band ended up backing some singer in the end. Out of your anus. Wonderful title. Right, one of my favourite bands, actually, that I have, and I do, um, I think I have nearly all of their stuff. Um, in fact, one of their albums is over there because I was playing it. This is Pato. Um, a lot of these albums I'll show you actually derived on the Vertigo label, and the Vertigo label is like my favourite label. And again, it's just one of those labels where I just can't afford, like, I can't, I couldn't afford to um, buy the original. Um, Pato albums or Gracious or anything like that and I do see them from time to time in the shops um, I've even seen them going for not that much like I saw Gracious were going for like 150 the other day their first album and I was like ah but I just I, I couldn't really afford it but um, and these are like 20 quid um, but again it's this is a textured sleeve it's their first album which I really do like um, very they're kind of like a jazzy bluesy rock outfit um, some people compare them to Led Zeppelin a bit I think there was a case where they actually sued Led Zeppelin because they'd copied one of their songs or something. I remember reading about that. I'm uh, not sure how true that is, but this is 1970 as well. Great artwork. Really, really nice artwork, if you can see that. And it's, they're such a good band. I do love Pato. Sometimes they go off on what I call musical tangents, where a lot of the jazz, and like jazz is like that anyway, um, kind of goes off on one for like five minutes. <laughs> And, you can't, and it, the song sort of loses the plot and then it comes back to the song again. But I, I do love it. And I mean, if um, this is a great example of that, actually. But um, Ducks in Flight, um, it's called The Lost Jazz Album. Um, I, I think it's just kind of like unreleased stuff and some live stuff on here, um, including the song Teachers, which is brilliant. If you get to hear um, Pato do Teachers, it's a really good song. Um, and this is a karma as well. And it's just one of those nice little albums that sort of come out. And when you're a fan of Pato and, and a karma release, something like this, which has unreleased material and everything, you just think, yes, great. Because um, it's quite a sad story, really. Um, Mike Pato himself died of cancer in the 70s. And he was in Boxer as well for a while, which is another good band. And um, I think one of them died and I think two of the others died. And the other one, I, th I heard one was like brain damaged or something after a car accident. Um, it, it's not the kind of band you can bring back together again. Um, and the other cover, Hold Your Fire. So I just had to go collect that. Um, and I had an Akama edition, which I'm selling actually on eBay. It's just the plain cover. But in fact, when it was first released, it was more like this. And you could actually move parts of it. And you can, you can sort of have a bit of fun with the characters make them sort of change their outfits and stuff. And it was just kind of like, um, you know, Karma did funky sleeves like this. And this is what's great about prog rock, you know, and a lot of rock albums is that they're so experimental with their covers. And I just, I you'll learn through my vlogs like that I have a thing about covers and I love my artwork. And there are just some albums that I think, why did you do that? Um, but this is a great example of a lovely cover, and it's actually my favourite Pato album, Hold Your Fire is fantastic, and the songs like You, You Point Your Finger, and uh, it's just it's just a great album, I couldn't recommend it enough, and I think this one is 71, yeah. Um, again, oh, brilliant album, this was on Harvest originally, again this is quite worth quite a lot if you find the original issue, and it's Bakerloo. Um, this band, I think, I think it's the only album they released. Um, and it's a very bluesy rock, very bluesy rock, 1969. Again, you've got another gatefold sleeve. It's named after the underground station and the images, this kind of, kind of battle scene. Um, and it's, it's great. Um, I could tell you actually some great songs on here. Worried Feeling is brilliant, you know, um, and it's got some classical in there as well, if I remember rightly. Again, it's just a really nice album. It's one of those albums I actually, whereas Pato and that I can I can enjoy and really take in and and soak in. And this kind of album is the sort of album I like to have on in the background when I'm writing. Um, my profession, I'm a journalist, so 
uh, I spend a lot of my time in front of the computer, so and I do I take a lot of my work home as well with me. Um, so it's nice to have this music playing in the background. Uh, next album, on Karma is Velvet Fog. Brilliant, brilliant, very psychedelic late sixties album. Um, I think they toured around the Vietnam War time and songs like Yellow Cave Woman. Yellow Cave Woman is brilliant, and there's one song, um, Once Among the Trees. It's just a very eerie song. It's just, uh, it's brilliant. It's great stuff. I mean, you know, if this is kind of, um, it's more on the psychedelic side. I thought I found like a, a MySpace, uh, MySpace, <laughs> a MySpace uh, page for Velvet Fog, and. Um, and I thought, oh, okay, cool, you know, some of them must have gone back together. And then I played some of the music that was on there, and it was just crap. I don't really you know, it doesn't sound anything like their original music. The thing about this cover as well, and some reissues I think do include it, but they've actually cut off the bottom here, because in fact you'd actually see these women's titties um, on the original issue. Um, so this is almost like a kind of censored version. Uh, not really sure why they did that, to be honest, because there's got to be some kind of historical context, especially for collectors to want to see the whole cover in its full nude glory. But um, that doesn't really bother me too much. Um, this one, it's probably one of the ugliest covers um, I've ever seen, but I actually quite like it. It's Cold Cuts, which is a Nicholas Greenwood uh, album. It's actually a really, really, really nice album. Especially the second song on side one, um, Hope Ambitions, it's a, it's a really, really nice track. Um, and he's a good singer, a good musician, but it's just a, such an unusual cover. And it's one of those covers you see where you're like, hmm, what is that? It's kind of gross, it almost looks like, I don't know, those like mushrooms and what looks like chicken bones or something like that on the chair. It's just sort of very very strange idea where they must have you know this this guy Nicholas Greenwood was like yeah that's awesome yeah yeah we'll put that right on the front cover um, but it catches your eye um, and again it's another nice comma release I haven't seen this actually um, I see this quite rarely um, in terms of even online and stuff so I, I, I don't know how easy it is to get hold of um, Earth and Fire which is uh, Red Bullet Records it was on originally in 1970, um, a female lead singer, and it's one of those albums that not a lot of people talk about, not a lot of people know about it, not sure how many albums they, they did, but every track is quite like addictive sounding, and it's, it's, it's really good music, um, it's just one of those albums that's just sort of fell into obscurity like all of these really, and it's just solid good music. Uh, it's such a shame that all of these bands, you know, never really thrived. Um, well, this band did okay, If. Um, you can get If 2 and If 3. To be honest, I haven't listened to the others, and I have to be honest, I got this because reading magazines like Record Collector and that, people reference it a lot and say what a good band it is, and it's okay. I wasn't, I wasn't like, massively impressed. And, and to be honest, I don't listen to it enough, so I'm not even sure... I can't even remember if it's it's I think if it's more jazzy or what, um, but yeah. If I, I'm not sure if I'd recommend if maybe if you can, if you caught it online. Normally I actually use YouTube to be honest to, to listen to a lot of these uh, albums before I consider buying them. Um, but one that I can recommend quite confidently is Warhorse, and this is in a gatefold sleeve here. It's quite strange. It's a double album, but both vinyls slot into one compartment here, which, is, um, which you see sometimes, which I always find a bit strange. Um, and it's, yeah, it's just it's just a nice band, it's just, it's quite cool, I, they're not particularly proggy or anything, um, it's just good solid rock music. Um, I think there's a song, Show Me The Way To St. Louis, or it's just called St. Louis or something, I think, and, it, and it's a really good song. I think they even released it as a single, and it did, like, it's okay, and I think it did brilliantly. Um, but lovely cover. They did do another album actually, a second album. Um, I'm not a fan of that cover where it's like a, a ship or something with the band's heads on the front, um, like the Bow Maidens. And uh, Akama released that as well. Um, 
uh, the sad thing is about Akama, they had this website which made it quite accessible to buy the, the albums you wanted and the website's kind of shut down and even though you can still get Akama records and they're propping up in places, I'm not really sure, that I don't think they have a particular record where you, a place where you can source it from. Um, here's an album actually I've kind of neglected but I bought, it was um, an Akama issue called, and it's a band called Christmas I think, Heritage? Um, what are they called, Heritage? Um, and uh, yeah, I, I, to be honest, I haven't really listened to this one. Um, and I know there's a few Christmas albums um, out there, and there's um, that Akama have actually released, but I need to give this a chance, really. But I do actually quite like the artwork. I don't know why, it's not much to look at, but I do quite like it. Um, this one, this is one that I just saw, and it was only a couple of quid, and it was an Akama reissue. It's got Odin, and it's I think it's a German uh, band, and um, yeah, it's quite proggy music. It's it's okay. I I, I wouldn't like highly recommend it or anything, but um, you know, it, it, it sounds okay. I just don't listen to it very often. Uh, here's a good album. Um, is it? I don't know. I'm never sure how to pronounce it. If it's Cressida. Cressida, Cressida, um, but this is a solid album, great, great band, um, they do have another album or two out there that I've seen, um, and again, this is another nice gatefold cover, and um, I've always seen this around, um, reissues of this, um, particularly the Okama one, and I just eventually, I just picked it up, and uh, yeah, this is this is a good, good, nice album, it's, it's proggy, it's... Um, They've got uh, sort of, how do you say it, quite complex, you know, kind of uh, performances going on there. But it's nice. I, I really like the cover as well. And I like these really interesting covers, you know. I like covers that sort of stop and make you think. Um, one of my favourite covers is um, Comus. Uh, I think that's brilliant. Um, and there's a link, I think, to the Comus cover in one of these coming up. Um, yeah, Rose of Mushrooms, Leaf Hound. A lot of people have heard of this, Leaf Hound. I think Record Collector in 2007 had this magazine. Um, it's kind of the, make, the issue that got me into a lot of prog, where uh, some guy listed like the top 100 prog albums that you you, you know you want to listen to. Or not, It's I think it's the most sought after, mainly, that he listed. Um, and this came out at number one and it was like over a grand or something, and this was back in 2007, I'm not sure what an original issue costs now, but it's quite heavy, heavy metal type, early metal kind of rock. Um, it's a nice band, I think they're still going, you know, and every now and then you, I still hear about Leaf Hound or there'll be some kind of prog or record collector magazine that has a CD with it and they had like some new tracks from Leaf Hound, I'm sure I saw that, maybe it was unreleased stuff, I'm not sure. But this is a good album, and this is something, you know, I really enjoy. It's good, solid rock music, and I would recommend that. Um, one of the bands that I love, and I think I love it for actually the artwork more than the band itself, um, which is May Blitz. Now, this is the first one, and I think, don't hold me to it, but I think it's the same artist that did the Comus cover. Um, and I'll do another vlog about Comus. And I've got a story to tell about Comus as well, um, but that will come at some point. This is a lovely Gatefold album. I mean, look at that. It's brilliant. Just to get another kind of like early heavy metal, 1970. These guys were on the Vertigo label as well. Um, really hideous woman on the front, but it's just awesome cover. It's just awesome artwork. You don't get artwork like this anymore. You rarely do. And... The music, I really, really like in it. You know, they're not the best band in the world. I wouldn't really boast them that much. But it's a band that I really enjoy. And sometimes it's kind of nice when you've got bands like this that only have one or two albums out. No one else knows about it. And it's kind of it almost, you know, it's like yours in a way. And you can just listen to it and enjoy it. <laughs> and and th this is the second one, Maybelt's, um album. Um, and I think it's, it's called The Second of May. The 2nd of May, get it? I wonder if they released it on the 2nd of May. Yeah, let me know if you know that. Um, but yeah, another Gatefold album, Akama. Again, this was on Vertigo. This is 1971. It's, it's, it's almost like um, a 
kid or this is some like A-level student artwork, but I quite like it. <laughs> um, I've seen a lot worse, to be honest. But I think it's it's just it's just a nice cover. And again, the second album is quite good, actually. I quite like the second album. Um, I do prefer the first, but I quite like the second. I'm not sure if it's the same guy that drew that, but I imagine it was. Here's an album that I have to admit, a lot of people are going on about. It's got great cover artwork, Dr. Z. Listening to the album itself, I wasn't like hugely impressed with it. I can't even remember actually what it sounded like. I might, I should really give it another try. Um, but yeah, it's, I mean, again, it's just another great example of artwork. I mean, you, you know, you don't get artwork like this. It's like the Pato one, you know, it's hard to be inventive with a CD. And a lot of people buying iTunes, I don't buy CDs. I have like 12 CDs I think I own. Um, my parents tried to get me into CDs and tapes as well. And I just couldn't, because I think they felt I had too many records growing up as a kid. But so I was a really stubborn kid. Uh, so I have a lot of records. But yeah, um, Dr. Z I'd listen to online. I'm not sure if I could recommend that because I don't remember it too well. But it's a really nice looking edition anyway. Here's one of my favourite albums, and it's uh, Gracious. Uh, it's just a fab album, really, really good stuff. Um, very proggy, um, I think uh, there's a lot of classical in there. Love the album cover, it's so simple, but I think it works, it's, it's just their symbol. It's quite clever marketing in a way, because when I see that, I just think Gracious. Um, they do have a second album, I'm not sure if they have a third one, it's kind of a crude artwork going on there. I'm not sure I understand that. But you got a lot of that psychedelic kind of art back then. Um, so actually, in a way, it's like when you open the. I, I keep referencing Homeless, but some of these other bands, you do get sort of similar looking artwork like this. I think you get this on the Killing Floor as well, that kind of artwork. Um, and this was 1917, this was on the Vertigo label, and this is one that I saw for 150 quid in a record shop called um, Across the Tracks in Brighton. Um, yeah, I don't know if it's still there or not, but it's such, I'd, I'd, I'd highly recommend this. I got it on iTunes for like four quid or something. It was really cheap. Um, but it just sounds brilliant on vinyl. It's such a good album. Um, there's tracks, uh, Heaven and Hell in particular. Um, and, and it just sounds good, like Heaven does sound heavenly, and it's just like a really... Uh, it's quite addictive music and Hell's quite interesting and it, it's they're quite long tracks and they have all different parts to it. They're quite like quite complicated compositions. Uh, they're very, very clever musicians. Really good band. I, I, I definitely recommend Gracious. Um, here's an album I liked. Kind of a strange choice, actually. Uh, Mike Absalom. I don't know if he's done much more, but there are YouTube videos of a Mike Absalom with this like old man like playing guitar. I don't actually know if it's him or not, because I don't think he's playing any music from this album in it. But this is a great example of a cover, and again, this was Vertigo too at some stage, and it sort of opens up like this. I have to be careful, because the record can fall out of this. But it's sort of, how it opens up like this. How mammoth. Is that I don't, I'm not even sure like what way this is supposed to be up, but I think it's that way. But yeah, it's great, great sleeve. Um, you can get this, you know, if you go to the right record shop. There's a place in Brighton called Borderline that gets a lot of these reissues, and I think I got this one from there. And it's kind of it's more like country music. It's just one man and his guitar, but it's it's clever lyricism. Um, quite comedic lyricism as well and it's quite catchy music it's just one of those albums that I listen to again and again and you get so used to it like the way I got so used to listening to the Beatles Sgt Pepper you know when I was a kid to the point where I like all the songs it almost feels like it should be popular and it should be out there I would recommend listening to this one if you can I, th I can imagine a lot of proggy fans um, rock fans may not really take to this but I really like it and I love the artwork. I think it's brilliant. I really do love the artwork. I love the artwork on all these albums. Um, not a big fan of the um, Ducks in Flight, the Lost Jazz album of Pato. I think that's a bit of a, a lame-ass cover. And um, Cold Cuts is a bit strange, but at least it's interesting. 
And the last one here, actually, I don't know why I've ended on this, because I actually don't know much about this band, and this is another one that I've picked up and haven't really listened to much, but it's called Dead Forever by um, an album, uh, by a band called Buffalo. Now, I think this is Gatefold as well. Yeah, in the graveyard, that's not morbid. I um, find that there's a lot of um, prog rock bands in that and covers where you, you see them sat around graveyards and things like that. I actually like graveyards, I think they're quite quite cool. Um, there's one round where I work in Horsham where they've let the weeds and the grass grow out so much that you can only see the tips of these headstones that have been there since the 1800s. But you could get lost in that place and it's just very eerie and just really interesting. and really gets the imagination going, much like this music. And this has got quite a cool album cover, um, but I haven't given it a chance, I have to admit. Um, I, I, I think, you know, I have listened to it, but I wasn't massively impressed. Like, if they had another album out, I probably wouldn't get around to buying it. But that's pretty much it. I did have, and I'm selling at the moment on eBay, um, and a Karma issue of Linda Hoyle, Pieces of Me, which is an amazing album. Um, but the Akama edition was just a plain cover. And this other label have reissued it recently, and it was like gatefold, as the original one was, and 180 gram record, and it came with a CD as well, which I think you really need the CD. But, you know, it was a much better version than my Karma one, so I've kept that, so that's not really included in this video. But... I just wanted to introduce myself, show you some of my favourite records and have a theme and obviously this one is the Akama collection that I have which hopefully will keep growing. There's a lot of Karma records out there that I'd like to get but you know I don't come across them as much. Um, like I'd like to get Fuzzy Duck and um, there was another one, in, in fact you know around when the website went down I'd bought quite a few records off of the website and I got about three or four of them and I didn't get the others in the post and I was like what the hell? And I contacted them and they got back to me to say that they'd sold out on some of the others and they hadn't charged me for those ones. I was quite disappointed. Um, and then the website kind of crashed after that really. I'm not really sure what's happened to Akama. So if anyone has any information about them, they are still releasing stuff, reissuing stuff out there. But I think they're just reissuing their catalogue that they've already done. I'm not sure if they're actually remastering anything new. Um, but if you're if you like uh, prog rock music, you know I'd highly recommend picking up some of these albums. Um, these are the sort of albums I've been nurtured on in the last ten years or so, um, and I listen to this music all the time. But um, I will let you go. Until next time, my name is Simon Rob, and uh, yeah, please like this, please leave some comments below, and please subscribe. And I will promise to keep some videos rolling. And I will see you soon. Bye.